if you're watching this video, you're in for a treat. Check this out. So I didn't have any idea about the music business. I didn't have any of the idea about putting together a band. Bells, Texas, very Bells. small town just uh, east of Sherman. Uh, my grandpa and my mom have always played music throughout my whole life. Uh, mom sang and played guitar as long as you know I can remember, and then uh, my grandpa and his whole side of the family were really music talented. Grew up in Wyndham, Texas. High school at Honey Grove. I see my reflection in your sunglasses. In seventh grade, got a bass guitar, traded it for an electric guitar, and um, started taking guitar lessons eighth grade. I, uh, I started playing drums when I was really little because my mom plays drums. I've known Justin for a long time. We grew up uh, together in Bells and went to the same school. I've known Dustin for uh, probably 10 years, maybe. Started playing guitar when I was 13, played uh, saxophone, played drums, played bass, obviously. I've been to Dustin's open mic knock a few times. Uh, just him jamming acoustic, never full band until I actually came on. Because after their first song, they, they're immediately up at the merch table and trying to buy CDs, t shirts. Said I woke up this morning, my boots still on the faded, a pair of jeans and my old long. My dad got me a guitar when I was 12, or yeah, for my 12th and birthday. So happy and after that, my hobby was, was music. I didn't really do much other than that. So it don't live me, and I'm just living my life, even though I might not When I started, I, they asked me to come on as a tour manager, uh, or like a road manager, sound guy. So it don't live me. I guess around 2009, I really got serious about playing music again and started writing some songs. And, uh, the breakup that I just went through, you know, somebody else says their Mary left and had plenty to write about. So um, I finished writing songs like like I knew how to yeah. and uh, put together a record. I actually met with a guy named Jason Smith, which was our uh, previous bass player before Michael Wade. And uh, he's like, man, I got this guy you got to go record with. He's down in White Settlement. And, uh, his name is Greg Wyatt. And, and I didn't know it at this point, but Fuzzy had already showed Greg my stuff, and Greg wanted to work with me and, like, loved the, loved the music.
I was getting more serious about music. Yeah. So um, the first step to that I thought was making a record, you know, and then now I had a record with all these badass musicians playing on it. And like, man, now I gotta get a band because I'm out here playing all these acoustic gigs. It doesn't sound anything like my record. I went and watched a band called Two Bar Town, and there was a kid there named Colton Gilbert. I was actually playing in another band and decided to uh, part ways with those guys. I wouldn't say actively like going out and trying to steal musicians, yeah, yeah. but just like, hey man, if, if, just talking to other hey guys, if y'all are looking for something else, I'm starting a band. Dustin had known that I'd been playing in bands, and um, up until this point, I didn't know that he was trying to get a band together. I thought he was just playing acoustic kind of locally. He was, we were looking for a drummer. And um, we looked around, and I was like, man, I got this guy I went to high school with. He's, he plays in like punk rock bands, but I know he's really good. It was me, Colton, Justin, and um, a guy named Jason playing bass. Realistically, without Fuzzy, um, I don't know what I would have done. You know, I, I probably would have been down a completely different road, I would imagine. So, you know, he, he, was a, he was a big step and a big uh, contribution to, to building this basis for it came from, so. I'm Carlton Gilbreth. Along with the rest of us. Can you smell it? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. I want to smell it. I want to know what it smells oh like. My. Oh no. The first six months, not only we played a couple of shows, we played a lot of shows. And the entire experience in the Dustin Perkins band is we we just took it, you know, month by month, and uh, just it's gotten better and better. You know, we're just trying to build our brand, basically, as, as any band kind of tries to do. You know, build our shows up, keep playing shows, uh, stay relevant and consistent. It just improved more and more every day, every show, every, I mean, even just hanging out with the people like that were in the band at the time and even the people that are in the band now, like, every day it just gets better and better. Uh, Dr. Perkins, these guys are bad ass, no, Go no, buy the record no, right now. No, you Go buy the record you ain't right got a now. Don't listen to him. Go buy the record. Dustin Burgess Video Diary of 2001, here we are. By the time of six months, I was already blown away. I was like, man, we're playing shows every weekend, you know, and people are loving it, and I got a new record out, and I got a new band, and stuff was going right, man. A woman named Carrie Hyde and Deborah Dole, uh, Entertainment was the name of her company. Um, they approached us. Um, we actually met one of her um, employees 
I did doing acoustic gig up at uh, T Bones, which is Smitty's now. I, I've already yeah. transferred myself to Smitty's, but um, at T Bones, and uh, he said, "Man, I work for a management company, and I think we could do something for you." And he had uh, X Dow. NFL football player with him. He said he worked for a management company. Cool. I'll go meet with him. The woman that we signed with, Carrie Hyatt, the NFL and Dallas Cowboys Stadium with Jerry Jones. And uh, when everybody submitted their music, there were several bands that submitted their music to play some club. Um, she had a little bit more pull than some of my life. And so we got we got chosen to play Super Bowl 45 in Jerry Jones' owner's club. And it was, if you ask about the experience, it was, it was a chance of a lifetime. It's something we'll never replace. It's something that we thank Carrie Hyde for. I mean, I, it obviously wouldn't, wouldn't have been possible without her. What she means to me, but if I could have I'd give anything. When Fuzzy couldn't commit his time to being part of the record and being that connected with everything, like like everybody else had, in the band had, had made the sacrifice to do, it, it just became evident that Fuzzy's job, which is a great job and I'm very happy for him, um, wasn't on the same page as the band was. But what happened, we, we made a decision to fire Fuzzy because of uh, Nothing more. It wasn't anything personal. It wasn't anything lack of what he was doing. He was helping the band so much, but it just literally the band had outgrown what he was able to go with us and do. Um, we were getting busier, and he wasn't able to take off work. You know, he's had missed gigs or whatever else. You know, we're recording a record. He couldn't take off work. Um, we were all full-time musicians. We made that sacrifice. So therefore, we wanted somebody to make that sacrifice with us. I contacted Michael and I said, "Hey, man, if you get your chops up, maybe you can start jamming with us." So he started practicing and just kept kept steady with it. We recorded his first EP. The, I forget what it is, what it's called. The, the homeboy a dollar or something like that. I don't, I don't remember what he called it. But yeah, we recorded in my dad's house, and that was when we were playing with the other band. And uh, I told him then that if he ever got a band together that I wanted to play drums for him. Um, but when the time came and he was putting a band together, um, he had Nate come and try out and obviously Nate it was a great choice. Nate called me and he's like, um, we might have a spot for you. He's like, I know you play guitar. How do you feel about playing bass? And I was like, man, that'd be awesome. You know, obviously I want to play with Dustin. And uh, he's like, well, start learning the tracks. And if if it comes up, you know, we're we'll, we're gonna give you a tryout. Michael happened to be the first one we tried out. I saw how much he cared about the project. Um, he had obviously been practicing our stuff, obviously he'd been practicing the bass, which he didn't even play bass. He didn't own He, he didn't own a bass at the time. Yeah. He went and bought a bass rig to practice and try out for us. And that that dedication right there, man, is like, I want to be part of this. I'll do anything it takes. I'll go buy a bass rig. I'll learn how to play the bass. I know I already know how to play guitar and drums and piano. And, you know, he, he's always been around music. Um, that drive alone, I didn't have to try out anybody else. I didn't want to try out anybody else. What had happened uh, at the time, like like you talked about, we signed with a management company, Never Dole, and uh, we'd really realized that I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that they weren't doing exactly what we expected of them. We still need help.
when I met with Chris, um, in which I knew that he was just passionate about music, whether he was passionate about our project or not. So we decided to hire, hire him on as a uh, road manager and front of house band. They asked me to come on as a tour manager, uh, or like a road manager, sound guy, and uh, just to kind of take some load off. Well, you act like nothing happened, then I would be okay. But you've wrecked more of my world than you ever can replace. Done me wrong, wrong, wrong. Oh, baby, come on the road with us, Dozen Perkins Band, Video I Diarrhea 2012. <laughs> this thing on. Radio tour was brutal, awesome, and I learned so much. When we were in the middle of our radio tour, we had an RV. And uh, we decided we were going to drive to the coast of Bay City and uh, swim in the middle of the night. And that was a, that was a fun time. an RV, have, having enough money to you know, be something cool like that, even if it made us go broke after a couple months. We got on this cove, we thought it was going to be more of like a resort area. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning, and uh, finally got it back on, and we were like, we're on radio tour, let's go swim. Jumped in the ocean. I had this buddies, buddies that we stayed with down in San Marcos, and one of them had grown up in Denison, his name was Alex Richmond. And this guy is a gypsy if I've ever seen one. Coolest cat you'll ever meet, doesn't care about anything, just whatever, flies by the seat of his pants, just like us, cool cat. And uh, anyways, we stayed down there in San Marcos, about a week later we get back, and Jet's like, man, what do you think about Alex going on and running merch for us? When I was living in San Marcos, uh, Chris had called me and said they were coming through, playing an Austin show, and wanted to come down and hang out with uh, our roommates who we've known all through school, high school, middle school, elementary. And uh, so Chris and Dustin came down and sat around and drank a whole lot. And the uh, boss <coughs> came about. So that's why I'm here. Go check it out. Uh, now, next up, I want to get in the head of Dustin Perkins. I want to want to hear a little bit about you. My name is Colton Gilbert, and well, I'm about to check it out. <laughs> this is the YouTube premiere. The YouTube premiere of Dusty's brand new Gibson, what is it? Hummingbird Pro. Hummingbird Pro. Pro. Here it comes. I don't want him to say oh. Isn't she a beauty? He's done a little bit of everything, kind of the jack of all trades. Uh, came to us, his musician side was coming back out. And, you know, he's like, man, I love mixing you guys, but I really want to be able to turn on stage. I miss being able to turn on stage. Like, what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, man, I know y'all been kind of talking about having the keys player, you know, you got keys on the record. What if I learned keys and I came and play with y'all? Hey, man, bad ass. So, for the next couple months, or just about a month, I think, December, December to January, is when he actually got some keys and started learning. And um, within a month, he became a pretty bad ass keys player, I mean, especially for playing for a month. So, um, January the 1st. We released our new record and debuted our new keyboard player slash ex-road manager 
sound guy, which still Slash is a sound guy. The biggest thing for us in playing Shadow Rising Star is that we wanted to play TMR. And to place third and then get to play TMR anyways, to play the main stage, open the day on the main stage, um, play for thousands of people. That was our biggest goal when playing Shana Rising Star. I started hearing like all the people talking about it and started looking at the roster and seeing the other bands that were playing on it. And, uh, and then it kind of all settled in when, when we got on stage and it was a really big stage, really nice. And, you know, there was a big crowd and we got to meet some of the other bands there and they were all really nice and really cool. We're going to Texas Music Revolution. If you could speak up in the microphone, it's a little loud in here. Texas Music Revolution. This is a song of our brand new record, The Next Step. Just got the ladies back here. Where are you? Ooh, he's talking about girls. Where you got your You got your life. We'll see a brand new music video on it and premiere May the 4th. We have to be in the Be sure to check it out. Jack comes to me and is like, man, uh, I got this buddy of mine that I know from, you know, when I play punk rock and stuff. and. Uh, he does some badass pictures and he'll, he'll do them pretty cheap. He just wants to do that. So we get a photo shoot set up. We're headed down to do the photo shoot. And, and Jet tells me, he's like, hey man, these guys shoot video too. And they're like, badass, man, you need to check it out or whatever. Like, man, it'd be really cool to have a video too. So after seeing the work that they did on the pictures and stuff, like, I, think, I don't think there was any doubt in any of our minds that we were going to shoot a music video. The other guys were doing their interviews uh, when we were making this documentary and deciding to uh, They hadn't seen the music video. We had just gone through the process of making it. Um, so we were just excited as you guys are right now about to watch this. Uh, and I've seen it now at this point. <laughs> and, and it's one of my biggest goals, one of my top five goals that, that I've set for myself. Um, and I was really excited because I had worked with Alex Kenner before, um, shot promo pics, had done some live videos for some of my old bands. Um, it was long, it was tiring. I, I got really drunk at one point and I was trying to get everybody to have a good time. It was fresh to see, like, these guys, the guys that we shot with, Alex and Steven, like, they came correct, you know, um, they brought an entire crew, like, you could still tell, like, you know, it's not that they're new at it, um, but they're still, like, working out what works for them. Really.
It's good. It's good. Let's go. Time to roll. Are we pushing this uh, one? You want me to go get her? Hmm? Are you pushing on this one? Yeah. Okay. This is the opening shot. Cool. I just appreciate everybody's help, you know. Um, obviously, we couldn't we couldn't be here without all you people sitting out there and uh, buying our show tickets and buying our t-shirts and buying our records and donating to our Kickstarter and writing on our Facebook that you believe in us and telling people about our shows or burning CDs for everybody. Thank you to everybody out there tonight that has that has done anything to help further our career because of because of everybody. Uh, believing in what we're doing because of people coming out to our shows, I'm able to do what I love for a living and, as well as the rest of these guys. And I don't, I don't think any of them would disagree when I thank everybody with all our hearts. Y'all believe in this band just as much as, as I do, as we do, and thank y'all for being here tonight. This is, like I said, something that hopefully we can all talk about later. That we were the few in the beginning that when all this started and I'm glad y'all are here. My name is Cole G and I think you'll remember everything I do. I was called by December. Great. Uh, man, I really want to say something funny and clever. Uh, no, I got nothing. We really appreciate everything that you do for us. Um, just over the next year, you see us in town, come see us, bring a friend, tell them to bring friends. Um, we're trying to grow this, and we want to come back home and see you guys. And it may be that we're coming back home less and less often, so when we come, we want to come and see everybody. Fourth Rialto, be there. Sometimes the lives are not fair, but be careful. One day you wake up, it won't be there. It's long for every day of my life, last bit of love, just running dry. Phone keeps ringing every time it gets quiet.